first was diagnosed with non-ischemic uh, cardiomyopathy, so heart failure, and that was in 2001. So that's been, it's been quite a while where I kind of gradually, you get better for a while, then you get a little worse, and it, it, but it's a down slope, you know. So finally in uh, 2007, I had a cardiac arrest, and then uh, that, I couldn't work anymore at all after that. And uh, my wife had uh, ovarian cancer, so we were, you know, dealing with that as well. Um, by 2014, I really started to fail. So Mr. Grimwood was referred to me by our heart transplant team to see if he would be a good candidate for heart transplant. He is a patient who's had a ventricular assist device infection for three years, and a number of places do not actually transplant such patients because these infections are very difficult to treat. In his case, it had been long standing. He'd been on IV antibiotics for about three years. It had multiple surgeries to try to resolve the infection. Uh, which had failed. I mean, they sort of contained it. And so he'd actually been turned down by five different transplant centers for a transplant because of that ongoing infection. So I was really interested in using bacteriophage therapy as an adjunct to IV antibiotics to see if we could resolve the infection. In general, device infections and VAD infections in particular are very resistant to antibiotics because the organisms form a slime layer on the device. And so antibiotics are not good at getting rid of that slime layer and getting into it. But there is literature published showing that bacteriophages actually penetrate the slime layer very well and they actually kill off organisms. So I was interested in seeing if we could, you know, continue the IV antibiotics that he had been on, but also add on IV bacteriophage therapy. And so we received approval um, on an emergency basis from the FDA to use uh, bacteriophage therapy in him. The thing about the phage was that there were no side effects that I could tell, and uh, except that I started feeling better and better. Yeah, you know, so that was a preferred. preferred side effect. So that that was probably the biggest thing. I because every week I was getting stronger, you know, and I hadn't really been because uh, these antibiotics, depending on which one you get, they could really knock you down. So. Uh, that was, that was really good that that happened. There. Within a week or two, yeah, within two weeks of being on the list, I got the transplant. I took a, um, they ask you if you would take a uh, hepatitis C positive heart. And uh, I did, and that's what I got. But they're going to cure that too. So, and that's only a few places do that. They're throwing those organs away. So, you know, that'll be great if, if, if they can really uh, perfect that. But it sounds like they are, they have. It, well, there was one, they, they never really worried me at all about these different things. It was just, well, we just got to do this and then we got to do this. And so they were very supportive about it all. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing technology. <laughs> I got to read up on more on it. <laughs> The other thing that we've done at UCSD, and we're actually at the forefront of this in terms of transplantation, is the use of hepatitis C positive organs uh, for transplant, especially in our heart transplant uh, center. And the hepatitis C virus is unfortunately very common in the U.S., and um, it's due in part related to the ongoing opioid epidemic. And so organs tend to be good quality organs, and instead of wasting them, you know, we can use them to save lives. Um, and I think that certainly happened in Mr. Wimwood's case as well. 
We uh, have been treating hepatitis C successfully in many settings, including in the transplant setting, and that is our plan with him as well. Certainly, he tolerated therapy very well. He was very compliant with medications, you know, along with the bacteriophage therapy. And I think as a center, you know, especially in terms of a heart transplant center, I think uh, we really came together as a team. And, you know, we tend to do that. And I think it's a team effort and it works. There's a feeling of, I don't want to project myself too much in the future because I don't want to jinx it. You know, it's all going so great right now because it hadn't been going so great, you know. So, uh, uh, yeah, I just, I'm just, I'm just anxious to get going, get back into a kind of a normalcy. But I, I'm going to work on a website, I think, to, uh, uh, for an educational website for patients to go to and maybe interview some of the different doctors I've met and start putting together a little database that people can go to and relax, you know, because a lot of people are very fearful. I just had, you know, enough knowledge to know that there was technology here that could maybe save me.